You are listening to the Midweek Redemption Podcast, a resource from Redemption City Church in Grand Rapids, Michigan. For more information about our church, please visit our website at redemptiongr.org. Hello, Redemption City Church. You're listening to the Midweek Redemption Podcast, and we have a special treat for us uh, today. I'm sitting in the luxurious new office of our very own Andrew Panaggio here at uh, Grand Rapids Theological Seminary. Andrew, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be on the podcast. Yep, great to have you, and uh, it's super fun to be able to visit you at work where, where the magic happens and, <laughs> and all that. Uh well, just before we dive in, uh, tell me a little bit about like what your role is here at Grand Rapids Theological Seminary. Yeah, so as of last summer, I serve as the Director of Admissions and Recruitment. So I help oversee our recruitment efforts as we try to bring students in uh, to pursue a graduate degree in ministry or counseling. Um, so I do some marketing, do some talking with students, um, yeah, a bunch of like Swiss things. Army knife kind of <laughs> it's, position. Yeah. Yes, there are a lot, a lot of little things. Um, so we're not a massive operation, so uh-huh. we have to do a lot of different things. But yeah, yeah, that's cool. Seems like you'd be good at that. The mix up and put on different hats and stuff. I try. <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> so nice. Yeah. Well, we're trying to do uh, just a connection point with these interviews since we're a lot of us are quarantined or just limited ways to connect as a church family um, and do uh, these three to one get to know you interviews just like a way to get to know your story generally without you know having to start like at the very beginning and kind of you know hit the hit the parts that have uh, influenced you so it's three people two places and one experience that have kind of most shaped you or formed you for for good or for bad uh, kind of into the man you are today um, but you can start either any any in any one of those places. You can start one, two, three, three, two, one, two, one, three, whatever. <laughs> I'm, I think I'll just I'll go start with maybe just go three, two, one. There you go. So three people. Um, I think yeah, the first person that comes to mind when I think of the person that shaped me um, is my youth leader. Okay. Um, his name is Victor. Iraola. Mm-hmm. Um, he lives in Peru, mm-hmm. which is where I lived when I was in youth group. Yeah. <laughs> um, he, yeah, he, um, he was just a great influence in my life. It really, when I was, you know, in, in a very important part of my yeah. my development. So I'm I, uh, I moved to Peru. My parents were missionaries. Moved to Peru when I was about ten years old, and. Um, we were part of a church that um, we, we really it was like a family similar to Remington City in a lot of ways where uh-huh. it's like it wasn't just like the place you go on Sunday morning yeah. and we were there all the time and um, because not because we had to because we yeah. wanted it's like our family yeah. so Victor Iraola he was the the youth leader and he invested probably when I was 14, 15 he invested a ton of time and effort in me and a few other people and in discipling us and um just like, yeah, helping us to grow and be more like Jesus. He, he, I mean, some of the the crazy thing is, he, he, he's not like. It's not like there's anything. Um, I don't know. He didn't have a seminary degree. He didn't have training. What he had was passion, and he mm-hmm. just cared. Mm-hmm. And so he just he he was a friend. He was a mentor. He was a guide, and just spent so many hours. Um. With me and with a few others, and um, I feel greatly indebted to him. That's um, awesome. So he, was he like the uh, like guy just out of high school, college youth pastor? Was he an older guy with a family? Or? Yeah, he he was. He was definitely not right out of college. He 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 didn't. I, he doesn't have a college degree. He was probably in his 30s, I uh-huh. think. Yeah. Um, and the way that it works in Peru, like, everyone's bivocational pretty much, except yeah. maybe the, main, the lead pastor, yeah, depending sure. on the church. Sure. So he, um, he, all of his free time was, like, investing wow. in the youth group. It yeah, was insane. Cool. He got married at, at some point while we were 
like while he was leading the youth group, uh-huh. and then he had he has one son oh, now okay. yeah. um, later on. But it was like <laughs> he spent so much time. Like wow. every Saturday, we'd yeah. Have, yeah, well, that's when we met and that's cool. play soccer and and uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was my next question. Was it like Bible studies or as you said soccer? What kind of stuff did you guys do together? We did just all sorts of things. Like, so we had Wednesdays, we had prayer meetings, uh-huh. and he was always there. And so we'd, we'd pray together. And it wasn't just a time where, like, we, we'd, we'd talk and pray, and he'd encourage us to pray for others, to, um, to think about how we should be praying. Um, so there was, that was on Wednesdays. Saturdays, uh-huh. we had. We had um, youth group, so we'd always play soccer and Peru everyone play soccer. <laughs> so it was, it was lots of fun. We'd play, he'd play um, often as well, and then we'd um, have a youth group meeting where we'd do some games, have some food, have a, a Bible study of some sort. Uh-huh. Um, and then Sundays we were together, he'd lead a Bible study often, uh-huh. and then just, you know, often we'd meet up outside of that for talking and yeah. so... That's cool. Yeah, spent a lot of time with him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so what, what would you say was kind of like the main quality or thing you took away from your time with Victor? Yeah, he, um, that's a good question. I think it's the fact that he was just present yeah. with, with yeah. me and others. Like, he he loved us and spent time with us. And, it's yeah. huge. It's and so he, huge. He didn't... <laughs> oh, man. He, he didn't... Like, he would just... He'd play with us. Uh-huh. Like, we'd, like... I mean, I don't even know if this stuff is allowed now, but, like, we'd, <laughs> like, wrestle, and, uh-huh. like, it was, like... He yeah. was just one of the... Yeah. He's just a friend. Yeah. Um, and that's awesome. So, man. yeah, I think that's... That's, that's great stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so that's number one. Uh-huh. Or, per... One of number one. First number one. The, the next one... I mean, the next two are going to sound... I don't know. Maybe less exciting. But my parents are have just... <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, they're just a massive influence... Sure. ...in my life for good. I'm... I feel like growing up, you don't really realize who mm-hmm. or what your parents are. Yes. And then you look back, and you're just like, oh, my goodness. See them as people. Yeah. 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 And, and I'm fortunate enough to say that like my parents were an excellent example of what it means to be a Christian marriage, um, what it means to guide their children towards like following the Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, I mean, I, like both of my parents to this day, like when I have... I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. When I have an important question, I go to them mm-hmm. and I ask them for advice. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think in a lot of ways they have influenced me. Now, as a as growing up, but even more in some ways as an adult. Yeah. And just trying to navigate life and think through our future mm-hmm. and think through big things and even small things. Um, so they, yeah, they played a massive role. Um, and I'm, and I've, what, what I've realized is, um, is that I'm super fortunate because not everyone can say that about yeah, their parents, yeah. and and that hit me again as an adult that um, God has given me this. It's a massive gift that I, I didn't don't earn, deserve, and and I'm just super thankful for that that I can go to them and seek advice, that I can go to them and know they're there. Man. So yeah, that's huge. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just like thinking of people, you know, whose family is like destabilizing or, you know, kind of like some, something that's like makes it harder. So, yeah, that's awesome. That's a gift God gave you. Yeah. Can you think, of, I don't want this might be putting you on the spot. Can you think of like a like a memory or like a short story of just that like kind of captures like something goofy or cool about your parents? Hmm. Let's see. Oh, man. Um,. So, uh, well, let's see, okay, with my mom, (laughs) my mom, I was homeschooled for the majority of my education. Okay. Uh Um, So my mom, I spent a lot of time with my mom (laughs) in particular. Yeah. Um, And she, like, I have been in school for a lot of years. I mean, everyone has through, like, you know, undergrad, or through K through 12, and then undergrad, and then I spent several years studying after that. Yes. She is like the hardest teacher I've ever had <laughs> of all of them. <laughs> so, oh man, yeah, that's funny, dude. Yeah. So I just yeah. remember countless times, like writing a paper for uh-huh. her uh-huh. that she was going to revise, and we would spend yeah. hours, and yeah. she would be like critiquing everything. Yeah. And um and 
like we fight and get mad at each other and yell at each other <laughs> and it's like but I'm so thankful for that yeah. now because she has made me like be able to communicate way better than I would have if yeah, it weren't for, for her sure, yeah. so yeah. that's my mom and then my dad I mean there's tons of things I could say but um, he was he's an athlete he played uh-huh. basketball at a pretty high level uh-huh. um, division one basketball and so growing up like uh, we played a ton of basketball and so I just have a lot of really good memories of him um Spending time, um, yeah, like t- him teaching me and my siblings how to play, and, uh-huh. and also reinforcing that basketball is not life. Because oh, okay, yeah. when he was young, he wasn't a Christian; it was his life. Yeah, and then kind of steering us away from yeah, like, making cool. sports everything. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, good stuff, man. Yeah, cool. Well, do you, you do it in order? Two places. Yeah. Well, I had I had one oh, more yes. person. I was counting my parents as, as one person. Oh, okay. I, I don't know if that counts. Yeah, yeah, your interview, man. <laughs> you, can, you can make the rules. Yeah, All right. Go for it. So uh, the third person, this is also my wife, is like... Okay, yeah, for so, sure. So, I mean, I could go on and on about... I feel like marriage has just grown me. Yes. <laughs> I've realized how selfish I am, and um, I don't know. She... I am very... So on the Enneagram, I'm a seven. Uh-huh. Um, which means I'm... A lot of things. One of those things means I'm never content, and I <laughs> always want to do something new. Yes. And she, I think one way that I'll capture who she is and how she um, has formed me, helped form me, is that she helps ground me and yes. not let me uh, just jump from one thing to the other to the other yeah. to the other and never end. So she provides some structure and <laughs> yeah in life. So yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah, I can relate to that a lot. Yeah. Cool. So, what do you have a, a fifth person? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I, yeah, I thought it was good. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. Do you want to move on to yeah so, your so locations? Late locations. Yes. The, my locations are somewhat general. Lima, Peru is the first one, <laughs> <laughs> and um, the, the little pueblo of Lima. Peru. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So that's where I grew up. It's kind of home in a lot of ways. Uh-huh. Um, I spent probably like. 13 years living there yeah. as a child and then as a teenager and as an adult. Uh-huh. Um, and re- and so, yeah, um, it's where I really feel like I understood the faith uh-huh. first, which is yeah. important. Yeah. Um, it's where I kind of realized where I'm, what I'm called to do, um, like the servant to, to, the reason that I actually live in Grand Rapids is because of kind of some of the self-discovery that I did in Peru. Uh-huh. Um, it's also got a... We lived relatively close to the beach, like the city's on the beach. Oh, okay, yeah. So right now I'm just thinking of the beach and mm. miss that so much. And yeah, like, with, we come in the summertime down there. Oh, yeah. it's Yes, and it's it's glorious. So it's just a, it's a great place. I have a lot of uh, friends, a lot of family there. Yeah. Um, there's great food, so... Lima, Peru is my number number one place. Yeah. Um, is there something about the, the culture of Lima that uh, you feel like shaped you? Yeah. Particularly? Um, that's... Well, yeah, it definitely. It's hard to, like... I think what... what um, the way that it formed me... So Latin culture is very different from West Michigan culture. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, like... Like, people are super warm and uh-huh. super... Um, like... Uh, generous with uh-huh. time and money and um, food and uh-huh. so I think that is something that I learned you know I also yeah. learned to, to be late wherever I go yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. It's, that's just <laughs> yeah. uh, I remember one time growing up we had we were my family we were going to come back to the states I think for a year of furlough to visit some of the supporting churches and families uh-huh. and our church did a going away party for us uh-huh. um, and we, my family, we got there like 45 minutes late uh-huh. to the party. To your own party. To yeah. our own party. Yeah. And that was, it was just perfect because... Were you like the first ones there? We, we actually weren't. Everyone was there on time. But <laughs> uh-huh. normally it was like... Yes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, yeah. but yeah, I think that the culture, like the warmness of the culture and like the importance of relationship yeah. and family. And that's the, awesome. I think that's probably... Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Big. Yeah. So that's place number one. Place number two is... Um, what I, I, it's like it's 
Grand Rapids, mm -hmm. and it's really like two parts of Grand Rapids yes. that have been massively formative for me. Uh -huh. So I before before I moved back to the states in 2013, I would have said that Lima, Peru, is my home, uh -huh. and the U.S. is the place where I have family yeah. and, and stuff, and I I'm a U.S. citizen. But where, where were you uh, before Peru in the U.S.? Were we, we were in uh, New York. Oh, okay. But 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 uh, West Michigan was always our home in the U.S. because okay. my grandparents live here, my aunts and uh, uncles, okay. so like uh -huh. tons of family. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. So, but but I would have always said Lima is my home. Uh -huh. um, but in the last seven years, I've kind of realized that Grand Rapids is also my home now. Uh -huh. In a weird way that I didn't expect and yeah. didn't want actually <laughs> yeah <laughs> but on. just and it's really two things it's it's Redemption City Church okay yeah and it's um my the seminary uh huh so I moved here to go to seminary okay and we wanted to find a church where we could be we could be family mm -hmm. and Redemption City was became that and yeah. it's like it's like it, when we thought of moving at some point the hardest thing to imagine has always been um, leaving mm -hmm. Redemption City. Like, if that were to happen, like, if we yes. were to move, like, imagine that. Like, yes. That would be so hard because yes. it's more, than, it's not just the place we go on Sundays. It's our, it's yeah. our family. Absolutely. So, um, how, how long have you been a part of Redemption City? Um, since 2014, like, March 2014, I think. So that's, uh -huh. like, yeah, six years, coming yeah. up on seven years. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, and then yeah, the seminary in, in some ways as well. Just kind of I've learned a lot here. So mm -hmm. my, Grand Rapids is my second place. Yeah, and then last one is one experience, right? Yes. Uh huh. So the one experience I put is going through seminary. Mm hmm. Um, and the reason for that is when I came to the U.S. Um. I came because I wanted to learn. I wanted to be, like, I wanted to be equipped to do ministry, mm -hmm. and I knew that I needed that. Mm -hmm. um, was there, like, a particular kind of ministry you're aiming at when you came? Yeah, yeah. So we, our plan was has always been to go back to Peru and serve as missionaries uh -huh. um, and to do, like, teaching, like, leaders, uh -huh. but also church planning. Like, those cool. two things yeah. are paired uh -huh. together. Yeah. That's been our plan from, like, the beginning. Okay, that's awesome. Um, yeah. And so we knew we needed to, to have some training to be able to do that well. Uh -huh. So we came here because of that. And, um, yeah, so this experience of going through seminary, it was like it made me – I learned so much in terms of, like, book knowledge and uh -huh. theology and uh, all sorts of other things. But I think the most important thing, like, all that's helpful uh -huh. and important if I'm going to be teaching. But what I really learned is that – I don't know that much. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. <laughs> like, I think it helped me. I really needed to be refined because I was proud. Uh -huh. And I was um, very confident in a lot of things. And um, I think the seminary experience made me realize, oh, my goodness, I know very little. And my way isn't always right. Mm. And um, I need to be able better at asking questions. <laughs> yeah. And I need to um, maybe doubt myself a little more mm -hmm. than I do. And and so that is what I feel like I learned more than almost anything else in seminary. I remember on the day that I graduated, someone from the admissions team that was before I worked here um, asked me, Andrew, what, what's like what's the one thing you learned? And I, my answer, like my immediate answer, was how much I still need to learn. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so I'm just thankful that yeah I feel like I've become less of a know-it-all. Yeah. <laughs> And a little more humble, and not to say that I don't still struggle with pride, but uh, yeah, this experience. And then throughout this experience, I became a father, uh -huh. and like <laughs> that also is like massive. Yeah. So yeah, like, seminary is yeah. my, my experience. Yeah, man. So yeah, well, that's I mean, in terms of uh, a seminary testimony, that's like about as good as I think a seminary could hope for. I feel like there's like a huge liability with seminaries, kind of just like cranking out little angry, ranty, you know, know-it-alls or whatever, and so I feel like a seminary is doing something right if it just kind of leaves their leaves their people uh, wanting to ask better questions and all that stuff, so that's a, that's a, good, that's a good word. Uh, I feel like I heard somewhere that you, like, were kind of, like, 
the rock star seminary student here, though. Like, you were, like, winning, like, Hebrew awards and stuff like that. Is that true? <laughs> oh, man. Um, uh, I Yes, it... I I did not really uh, helping your pride back. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tell me about the awards that you won. <laughs> I, I did, yeah, I did. I was fortunate enough to win a couple of awards and uh-huh. the graduate awards, um, an Old Testament award, uh-huh. and then a um, there were two others that were like the President's Award and the Dean's Award. I think uh-huh. is what they were called. Uh-huh. So, yeah, I, that's cool. Yeah. The Old Testament is your jam. Yeah, I I love the Old Testament. Um, I love. Yeah, I just love... I feel like it's not... We don't... At Redemption City Church, we talk about it a lot more yes. than... Uh-huh. Like, we've been in Daniel and Esther yeah, and yeah. Psalms. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times in evangelical churches, we you talk a lot about Jesus, which is really important. I don't want to minimize <laughs> that. <laughs> but the Old Testament is so cool. Yeah. Um, and so, sometimes, quite often, I think, in, in evangelical churches, um, yeah. minimized. So yeah. I just... Yeah, that's so, awesome. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so... Uh, what what would you say? Um, oh, I had a question. I just lost it. Wait for it. Oh yeah. Okay. So what would you say um, to to folks with like you know academia or just like kind of like thinking deeply, studying, reading all that is kind of your jam. What would you say to folks that either are wired that way and like to do that um, in our church, and what would you say to folks that aren't? What that's kind of like an upstream kind of battle uh, mm. on, on those areas yeah that's so um, to people that it is your is jam yeah, yeah, yeah I think um, yeah I think I think it's important to always be looking for um, different perspectives uh-huh. different ways of seeing things uh huh because um, I think growth comes from being challenged and pushed mm-hmm. a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I just encourage people to think, to, to look for um, for people that maybe you would agree some on some things with, but not everything with. Yeah. Because I think that's where you'll 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 be challenged and pushed, and you'll probably some of your convictions will grow deeper and stronger, mm-hmm. and other other convictions you'll probably be like, yeah. this one's not as important. That's good advice. So, yeah, that's... On that, on that note, I had a pastor tell me once, tell me if you agree or disagree with the statement. Yeah. He said, never trust a man who doesn't have any heretics on his bookshelf. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think I think there's some truth to that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you probably want to, like... Not too many. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a number where it's like, yeah. 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 And maybe the type of heretic we yeah, can right, talk right. about. Yeah, right, right, yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, there's some nuances there. For yeah, sure. yeah, but in general, I like it. Um, yeah, and then as far as the people that aren't, uh-huh. like it's not their thing. I was not a reader coming uh-huh. before coming to seminary. It was okay. like it was so hard for me at the beginning. Uh-huh. Um, like, so <laughs> I feel like that's actually those are my people, the people that aren't uh-huh. necessarily. Yeah. Now I love reading and yes. love learning, um, but I would say it's worth it to to spend some time. Mm. To, like it's hard work. To do it, there's there's this book by um, Karen Swallow Pryor called On Reading Well mm. that um, I got not probably like a year ago now. She's a literature professor. She teaches. She used to teach at Liberty. She now teaches at a seminary somewhere. But it, she she um, she talks about how reading good literature forms us as mm-hmm. individuals mm-hmm. and as people. Mm-hmm. It helps us to become to to learn like virtues. It mm-hmm. helps us to in a ton of ways. Anyways, my point is, but she says it's hard work. It's not easy. It's not like yes. it's going to, it's not like anything you want to do that's worthwhile is going to take work. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, like if you want to, like with sports or you want to be like Jesus. Yes. And all yeah. takes work. Right. Yeah. But it's worth it. Like, uh-huh. and so I'd say, um, yeah, carve out some time uh-huh. and put in some work yep. and do it. And you don't have to read, like don't make a plan of reading a book a week, but maybe you make a plan of reading I don't know. I'll start with a few books a year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, that's awesome. Do you have any? Uh, would you have any book recommendations? Ooh. Okay. Let's see. Um, one of my favorite books <laughs> was uh, in, that I had to read in seminary. Was it's called Reading Revelation Responsibly. And okay. Yeah. By Michael Gorman. It's it's about the Book of Revelation, but uh-huh. it's I, it was just it's beautifully written and it like. Is really powerful. Yeah. Um, and it, 
and I think it's really timely for yeah. the church. Yeah. So that was that's one. That sounds great. Another one that I really liked, which this is actually it's a what's it called? I think it's called a historical fiction. Uh huh. I guess. But it's like yeah, so it's like a, it's meant to be it's called the Lost Letters of Pergamum. Oh, I think I read that. It's so good. By Longnecker, I think. Is that right? Yeah. It's oh man, it's so good. It's, it's like someone was like kind of about the early church and stuff. Yeah, kind of writing back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I so, think I did read that. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was really cool yeah, because it's so fun. It, yeah, it's a fun read, and it's like it's like it's basically it's like as if they found these letters going yeah. from Luke uh-huh. to this guy that is mentioned one time in I don't know Revelation, I think. Yeah, and so like it's imaginary letters, but yeah. but it helps you imagine what it would would yeah. have been like to be in a first century church. So. That's, yeah, it's fun read. So yeah, worth I, I want to go back and read that. I remember really enjoying that. Yeah, it was good. So. Cool. Well, uh, if you were kind of wrapping up here, if you uh, were to just think about, you know, Redemption City, your church family, been a part of for almost seven years, is there anything like a, like a prayer or a hope you have for them in this season that you want to share? Yeah. Yeah. Man, it's it's it's. Yeah, we're in the middle of some really tough times and um, so it's really hard it's been hard for me and for my family to be apart from you all mm-hmm. <laughs> um, over the past since March um, yeah um, and then we're in the midst of election season and just there's like social media is full of Hmm. anger and frustration and it seems like the stakes are so high across the board um, like and so I think what my prayer for our church and for culture as well but especially for our church mm-hmm. is like we're called to be united we're called mm-hmm. to be one mm-hmm. and that doesn't mean that we're called to all think the same sure but we are called to all love each other and mm-hmm. to disagree well and so I think my prayer is that we would learn that we would that we would we would think of the other first mm-hmm. and that we would find ways to love each other even in the midst of disagreement mm-hmm. in the midst of frustration in the midst of anger in the midst of you know not understanding each other sometimes mm-hmm. but that we would that we would commit to being a family mm-hmm. and to loving each other well it's awesome it's a good word Thanks. good word to end on well I really appreciate your time covering out some some time here I had to wait in line outside your office because you're <laughs> a man in demand <laughs> But uh, I think this is some really great content for a church, so appreciate you. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's good. Uh, thank you for leading this. I am so happy that we're doing a podcast now. Um, well, we were already doing a podcast, but this type of podcast now sure. as well. So thank you, um, and glad that you are here and part of our church and, and leading us well. So thanks. Yeah, thanks, man. It's been a pleasure. Well, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.